Good morning. It's good to see folks. And I think it's probably about time for us to begin. There are all your bright eyed faces. Welcome. Welcome to the Leadership Dojo for this Tuesday, August 25th. And we're going to explore today the power of purpose, actually, as such a critical resource for our well being, especially in these times. And the way that I'd like to start, oh, I'm out to start. I should probably say that. Um, I know I've been on these calls before, but not for a while. And um, I am not who was promised you today. I think Nathan Shara was supposed to be here, but there was a last minute switch. So glad to be able to join you. Um, and let's start off with a really quick centering because we're going to take a deeper dive into centering um, and probably center a couple of times, if not three times. So just take a moment and say hello to your body. Um, and I know for some of you, it's morning. For some of you, it's probably late at night. It's late morning for me, but whatever you want to say, say hello, good morning, good evening, and notice the sensations. The quickest way to come into the present moment is to bring your awareness to the level of sensation. Also, just take a check. How's your mood? What's the emotional weather in there? In what, for many of us, is such an incredibly challenging time. What's your mood? And even in the midst of challenge, often we find joy too. So that may be there. Whatever is there, welcome it. And take stock of kind of the climate or the quality, the movement in your mind. Busy, sluggish, cloudy, radiant. And at this point, we are not changing anything. This is about the muscle of being with what is, without struggle, without going to war with it, just being with it. And then, because we are all in this deep and profound practice of choosing, of having agency, of trying and working to create our reality from the inside out, we organize ourselves on purpose. So really notice your feet on the floor. Let your body stack up straight from the feet up, whether you are seated or standing, even if you were lying down. It's just find a, find a vertical line. And then let's do a quick check of the horizontal places where sometimes we hold a lot of tension. So around your eyes, for example, squeeze them tight, 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 shut and let them go and squeeze and let go. The ocular band all the way around is one of the places where we shut down the movement of life and energy in our nervous systems our circulatory system, our lymphatic system, all of that shuts down along these ocular bands. Huge one for most of us. The jaw, everybody, yawn. Oh, it's okay. Be willing to look silly. I know I do. And then tighten that jaw. And release. We're just checking and, and inviting relaxation in these places, in these bands, where actually the tension in our muscles and tissues have cut off the full flow of aliveness across the chest, across the diaphragm, the abdomen, across the pelvis, the legs. So just do your own scan of what we call these usual suspects 
and invite more relaxation and ease. Bringing even more awareness and hopefully there's a little more space for that awareness just to fill you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. And bringing the breath right to the center of the lower belly. You can put a palm there, thumb in the navel, let your hand just fall on your lower belly. And notice the rise and fall of your breath. And that point, that center point behind your hand, behind your palm, right there in the center of your pelvic bowl, center of gravity. And with each breath, let more and more of you be there, filling that pelvic bowl, hip bone to hip bone, pubic bone, the sacrum, your aliveness, your breath, your awareness, your self. From here, we center in length, balancing the bottom and top halves of the body, allowing life from the center point down, down, down through the legs all the way down to the soles of the feet, allowing life from center up, each breath making more space in the spine, up to the top of the head, the dimension of dignity. Where can you invite a little more length, perhaps between your ears and shoulders? perhaps between your sit bones and your chest. Where can you allow a little bit more of your innate inherent worthiness to fill you? Let's center in with starting from the midline as if you're a book opening up unfurling a scroll, filling out with each breath, letting there be a little more space. Right side, left side in balance. Let yourself feel your right side, the edge of it down the side of your face, your right ear, down the outside of your right arm, right side of your rib cage, down your leg. And same thing on the left side. And with each breath, relax into the right amount of fullness for you. Most of us are squelched contracted in towards the midline. The response to the pressures and stresses of life, as well as to social shaping. Some of us kind of spill out, you know, we get really big and take up space. Find the right size space for your aliveness. In this dimension of belonging, interconnectedness, interdependence, engagement with and impact on the world, with. Let's center in depth, back to front. You can put a hand on your back, a hand on the front of your body. And with each breath, Fill in a little more. Just notice, are there places where, huh, either I'm kind of squelched and squeezed or nothing's happening? It's all good. Just notice and invite your aliveness, your awareness to fill 
perhaps you can feel the front and the back of your diaphragm. How about your heart, your throat, your brain? Making more room for the business and busyness of life to do its thing without your doing a thing about it. Let's put a little attention on our backs. Notice the air, your hair, your chair, your clothes, something. Find a sensation back there. I personally really love the anchor of my heels. Something to put some attention on this much neglected part of ourselves and a little awareness on the space behind it. We sometimes also think about the metaphor of what's behind you, what's at your back, who's at your back. However you want to play with that today, connect to what's behind you. And then coming through the body, attention on the front side, air touching your face perhaps. Just notice what's here. And what is the state of your front side? Is it tight? Is it warm, cool? Is there pressure? And just notice, is there a place on the front of your body that you can invite a tiny bit more softening or relaxation? A relaxed body is a powerful body. That softness may allow you to greet what's ahead with more ease. And say, metaphor, what's in front of you? What are you facing into? And the last dimension always of our centering, our getting here now, on purpose, present, open, connected. Say your commitment to yourself. And if you don't have a declaration or commitment you're working with, and even if you do, you may want to for this call, just connect to what is your purpose? What are you choosing to direct your limited and finite life force towards what do you want your life to serve? And really imagine, yes, that that fills you and defines you. And anyone looking at you would get a taste, get a whiff, get a sensation, a feeling of what matters. Great, great, great. Please drop your mood in the chat box. How you doing? Mood check. One word, just to say how you are in this moment. Great, wanna welcome all that, all that from exhausted and confused and distracted or nervous through loving, calm, anticipatory, uh, all of those things. Some of you, um, I think there's some words in here. I saw sore roll past me. Just notice if the word you've chosen, sometimes tired is another one. It may be more descriptive of a physical state and what's happening in your body, which is fine, but we really with mood are practicing a language of emotion. So just check, do you mean that you are exhausted, 
emotionally, which is a state, a state of being. So just pay attention to that. And part of why we want to get really skillful and um, have many, many choices of language, get a great mood vocabulary, is for the sake of our authenticity, our ability to connect with others, and our ability to cho choose to generate the moods that will serve our purpose. So from here, I want to just say a word or two about this purpose piece. Um, and a lot of the frame and what I'm exploring with you all today comes out of some of the research that obviously has is peaking right now around the impact of isolation and loneliness on both the brain and the nervous system, but also actually on our health outcomes. Um, and some of what has become clearer is that um, loneliness, and this is research that's being done at UCLA and Johns Hopkins and lots of different places, and no surprise, you know, but um, loneliness actually can diminish the our ability, the ability of our bodies, our physiology to deal with a variety of illnesses. Um, one of the things is that it actually lowers the ability of our immune systems to respond to viral infections. Kind of a scary thought in these times. Um, you know, it's, it's been connected to uh, cardiac issues, to dementia, to a uh, heightened inflammatory response. Um, and clearly we are in a time where we are no longer, most of us, able to connect in the ways that our bodies in our lifetimes, but also over centuries have evolved to be with each other, to be in close physical contact, to hug, to kiss, to be have a certain kind of relaxation and ease to be in community we are social animals and we're deeply in need of that. So here's the fascinating thing though. What the researchers found, the only thing that made a difference, you know, that they explored, oh, generating positive moods. And obviously generating positive moods is helpful, but the most profound impact in actually shifting how bodies experiencing isolation and loneliness could, could in, increase um, you know, those health indicators that they were looking at was a sense of purpose and the ability to create meaning. And the thing about purpose is not just any purpose, not, oh, I am going to you know, be the winner in the lottery of uh, owning whatever, you know, not necessarily self-gratifying purposes, but a sense of purpose and meaning that was self-transcendent and reached beyond immediate self-gratification. Um, the, there's a fancy word out of philosophy, I'm probably going to mispronounce it even though I practice, eudaimonic, eudaimonic, the whole thread of philosophy that looks at what is, what is it to live? What does it take to live a virtuous, meaningful life? And that word now the psychologists have lifted to talk about this eudaimonic well-being, purposeful living. Um, and part of the thing about this purposeful living, the one other thing to say about it beyond, besides that it's self-transcendent, is that part of the theory about why it works even when we are isolated, cut off, disconnected. It's almost a little bit like if we fool the body, that because we are acting as if, living as if, there is a community, a collective shape, a collective body, a society to make better, to improve, to contribute to, well, the body believes there is one. And it's just fascinating. I, I love, I can get real nerdy and geeky and go way down the rabbit hole on all this. But um, yeah, just the, the main thing is we're already in practices. If you're inside this 
um, methodology, this discourse of embodied transformation, of living on purpose, of acting on purpose, of deliberately moving towards the future that we have identified as meaningful and significant. Yes, for ourselves, but often beyond ourselves, right? That's why so much of this work is in the domain of leadership. So we're gonna play with that a little bit. We're actually gonna work with it to connect even more deeply for the sake of our well being and our ability to actually support well being in all the communities and circles and places where we are connected, even if it's only by Zoom. So take a moment, and this is what we're gonna do. And you can do it seated or standing. I'm gonna just wake up the body. Y'all have been listening to me for about 10 minutes here. So take a moment and pound your heels on the floor. Now just start to shake. I know, it looks silly if you're standing, that's great. Yeah, maybe even start to stamp your feet a little, shake your hips, squirm around in that chair if you're standing, really get a good wiggle on. Uh, yeah, take it down to your fingers and hands, maybe move your head side to side. It's just like telling your whole body, yeah, yeah, I'm here for it. I'm here for the energy and life in you. Shake, 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 <sighs> and let that go. Take a deep breath. Now, say your commitment to yourself or your sense of purpose. And as you say it, just see, is there one word or one phrase, short phrase, that is the essence of it? the nugget, that if you hear that word anytime, anywhere, it's gonna remind you of what you are about, what you are for. And then, all that energy and aliveness you just generated shaking, I want you to say that word over and over to yourself like it's a bell, bell clapping in your body. This is not working the way I thought it would. <laughs> See the pretty little clapper? Your phrase is that clapper. Your word. Really, really let it just resonate and ring in you. And in a sense, let it organize all that aliveness you just generated. Deep breath. Whatever your word is. Deep breath, say that word. Notice what happens to the aliveness, to the feelings of streaming, of energy, of tingling, whatever woke up. You are letting your commitment, your declaration call you into center, call you into your body call you into presence. Check your lower belly. Check your length and dignity. Really, is your purpose filling center, length, width, depth. And I noticed someone made a note that they're feeling some contraction, beautiful, also see someone immediately respond and said, feel, feel the charge in it. Whatever is here, and yes, our purposes, our commitments, we always say, you know you found the right commitment if it scares you a little bit, if you feel a little queasy, if you kind of want to forget that you had that thought, then you're on the right path. You're telling the truth. 
about what you're longing for. So whatever the feelings are, from joy and elation through fear, welcome it and keep letting the purpose move through you. And if it's not filling you, that's also information. Maybe you want to tighten up that commitment or play with it in a certain way. What's the baby step that perhaps you need to take? All right, from here, mood check again. Please drop your moods in the box, in the chat box. I'm not sure I will get to all the questions. One of them just vanished as the moods came in. Um, but, but perhaps if you want to send a note to Strozzi and they'll pass it on, I'll see if I can get an answer if we don't get to it. So just, yeah, stay curious. In curiosity, a wonderful mood. I see so many curious ones in there. All right. So the person who put, um, well, no, I'm not going to do it that way. Anybody who have a question, want to chat a little, really what I'd like to do is to talk with someone about their commitment, their one word, how it worked or didn't, what we just did. So uh, I guess. Got also, I'm, I'm happy to help you here. Thank you, um, love. I appreciate it. <laughs> if anyone wants to uh, come online, please use your digital hand and raise it. And uh, we'll take questions from that, that place. Great. Gabe. Great. Uh, Dorita, uh, would you like to come on, on camera, on mute? Hi, uh, thank you. I appreciate both of you being here with us. Um, my declaration has a string of words in it, and sometimes I find they're more powerful when they like kind of stack on top of each other. Um, but I found it really powerful in this exercise to choose one to focus on. So would you recommend that as a general practice to really get any declaration down to its simplest, <coughs> excuse me, its simplest parts? Does that have a greater impact or is it okay to keep it? We're all um, different. We're all so different, right? So um, I think the power of the single word or phrase is just that it's so possible then to just keep coming back to it with a certain ease. Um, I often notice, I mean, for some people, this is a practice, this is um, a set of practices, working a declaration that folks can really get into and use. And other people, it's like, oh, I kind of forgot my commitment. You know, it's just, it, it's not, it, it doesn't as easily go in to, you know, their bodies, their hearts, their souls. So it's a question of what galvanizes you. And yeah, you could have all the words in your commitment and still practice with this because really what, what the purpose of this is, how do we get this sense of purpose so deeply into our tissues and even down to the cellular level? And there is a difference between a long declaration with subordinate clauses and many words stacked on top of each other and a single word one of them will tend more likely to move you towards the cognitive conceptual level and the other perhaps more towards the body and emotion. All of it's you and we want all of it, but for the sake of embodiment, which will, will work. Helpful? Yes, very much so, especially thinking about how to embed it kind of in our tissues at a cellular level instead of being in process in my head about it. So. That's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Yeah. Anybody else, Solanus? Uh, we have Cleopatra Jack. Cleopatra, would you uh, unmute? Hi. Um, hi, Alta. Hey. Um, <laughs> hey. 
Yay! Hi, friend. Oh, hi. Um, so yeah, sometimes I think in somatic spaces, there's a really like wild difference of space time going on. Um, <laughs> and so I think I, I think during the exercise, I realized I had finished one commitment, but then created another commitment, but wrote a different one down altogether. Um, so I had thought of actually saying I'm a commitment to creating a reality grounded in abundant grace. Um, but I wrote down, um, I am a commitment to living in a reality grounded in abundance, uh, abundant grace. And I guess I wanted to know what would be, I know there's a difference. One scares me more than the other. So that was a good tip. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to just get your reflection on like, what is the difference between wanting to live in something and wanting to create in something? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know that I can answer that for you. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I knew that was the answer. <laughs> um, but here's one thing I would love to invite you to play with for a moment. Uh, which one scared you more? The creating one. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So just feel for a moment. Okay, say it to yourself. Yeah. Where's the fear? It's like right below my heart and above my stomach. Okay, so just being with that. Uh -huh. And when you think about what, what what is the fear of? What's the possible disastrous result? <laughs> um, I don't want to create something that other people don't want, I guess, sometimes. Um, but yeah. someone someone will. I guess is the thing, yeah. but that's yeah. the, you know. Yeah. So here's what I'm hearing. This is a real off the top shot, really obviously a brief conversation. It sounds as if living in for you is about you. And it's easier mm -hmm. to make that choice. And just mm -hmm. Whereas creating, ooh, ooh, that has implications for a broader circle of folks, you know, mm -hmm. and you might not want it. So, you know, I think stay with that. Don't don't worry too much about it because what I really hear as the heart of this in a in a sense is abundant grace. Mm -hmm. it's one other thing to think about: um, verbs or mm -hmm. creating can be limiting and almost like this this thing. It's like. Uh, this is the way it's coming to mind, and so I'll say it this way. It's as if the ego jumps in to say, this is how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's our process to get to the thing that really matters. Mm -hmm. It sounds like maybe what really matters is abundant grace. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, could you just say that? Say, I am a commitment to abundant grace. I am a commitment to abundant grace. That does feel, <laughs> obviously now I'm smiling. So <laughs> once yeah. I see the gap, I know it's something in a good direction. So okay. Okay. I am a commitment to abundant grace. Thank you. That's yeah. helpful. And then if when you work your, when you do your <sighs> commitment worksheet, living, creating, you can still get those in. Maybe they're in your conditions of satisfaction. Maybe mm -hmm. you know that you actually are embodying abundant mm -hmm. grace and being that because of something you're creating or mm -hmm. some way you're living. So it's not that we ever throw anything away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's real important to check, are we perhaps overcomplicating things by mm -hmm. dictating how do we get to the result we want? Right. Claiming, that's mm -hmm. what I want. That's what my life is for. And I'll get there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, love. Thank you for that question. All right. All right. Um, maybe one more, and then we, we have another piece, and I want to make sure that there's five minutes for Solanus at the end to share some SI updates. So is there one more question, comment? Uh, yes, we have Carolyn uh, Queef. I hope I'm saying her last name properly. Carolyn, oh. would you like to come? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me OK? Yes, hi. Hi, hi. Um, yeah, so um, I find it quite hard to say mine out loud because it feels very wordy and um, yeah. So anyway, I'll just say it. Okay. Um, so I am a commitment to love and power flowing through me for the sake of all beings. 
Okay. I want to just repeat it to make sure I got the words. I am a commitment to love and power flowing love, through. Love and power flowing or flooding? Flowing. Flowing through me for the sake of all beings. All beings. Yes. Okay. And when you played with identifying the nugget, what did you get? What came up for you? I got flowing at the end. Um, oh. I thought I would get love, but actually it was flowing. So you were surprised. Yeah, I was surprised. And how, and how, did, and how did it feel to let flowing fill you? Um, it makes me feel quite emotional. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. 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 Um, Can you say a little bit more about what's happening at the sensation level? Um, yeah, so my eyes are watering up. Um, there's a lot of kind of energy kind of whipping around in my body. Um, and my heart is kind of going a little bit faster. Um, and my eyes, my, my sort of peripheral vision feels bigger. Mm. Well, is it Carolyn or Caroline? Caroline. Caroline. It definitely sounds like you're onto something with pursuing flowing. <laughs> it sounds as if somehow this is a real key for your aliveness. Yeah. Um, how would you describe the the mood of this emotion of this emotionality that's welling up of this, these emotions? Um, it's quite a lot of things. It feels um, quite scary. So sort of scary in my stomach, yeah. almost like a sort of, ma not making you sick, but that kind of sense of like, um, that's kind of scariness. Yes. Um, it, it feels like, as you know, that there's a connection to something much, much deeper. I kind of keep doing this with my hand, but to something else that's kind of beyond me. Yes. And that I have to kind of almost just let myself into it. Yes. Rather yes. than standing on the edge. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so will you just sit with me for a moment? Just let's sit with all of what you just described. I am hearing breath. You talked about your peripheral vision. I'm hearing depth, that connecting to this quality of flowing connects you beyond yourself. Yes. That's the bit that makes me feel emotional. Yeah. Yeah. And is that emotion, well, you talked about the queasiness. So yeah. What else is there? Um, keep dropping in, keep breathing into your belly. Keep inviting as much flow as your body wants. So don't have to push it. But it's it's strange because there's a like there's an expansiveness, but there's also a going down as well. Um, that's happening at the same time. just because my internal geometry may be different from yours i, I don't hear going down and expanding as different I uh, yeah. expanding that is a directionality oh uh, yeah so expanding so, outwards uh-huh so like uh going down into something oh, as well. oh interesting ah got it yeah. got it and are they both um well, yeah, how do you feel about those two directions? Let me, let me not even presuppose. Uh, so beautiful. Huh? I feel excited and scared. Excited and, and scared. Yeah. 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 So um, I don't know where you are in the discourse, in the methodology, if you've read, for example, Richard's book on the art of coaching, but I'm hearing perhaps, I don't know, that this is like an, a, a beginning, this is a step into the unbounded 
space, the unboundedness of opening. Yeah. And there can be a lot of fear. Yes. And great news, right? Um, for all of us to get to the new shape, to get to that place we've declared we desire, that future for ourselves, for our families, for the world, we've got to go through opening. And opening means the old shape cracks, falls apart, dissolves. Um, and one of the things I want to invite you and everyone just to investigate, I, another thing I've nerded out on recently is awe, which also has enormous healing properties. And I wonder if in exploring awe and what brings you awe, you may find a little more ease with the big space that your desire to flow is actually calling you into. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Flowing. Flowing. <laughs> Flowing. <laughs> Anything else, love? Is that an okay place to wrap with yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the last few moments that we have, as I said, this was really today about working a little bit on declarations. I just wanted to remind you all that, you know, working a commitment, working a declaration, going through this process, identifying your conditions of satisfaction, practices, actions, committed listeners, the real emotional key, what we're really working towards, the whole purpose here, satisfaction. Satisfaction. And being able to know when we are satisfied is actually key to sustaining our movement towards this future we've declared. One of the things that can really get in the way, and most of us have more than a, a hint of this, any kind of perfectionism, right? Because then we're, and we've all been so trained to look at what's missing, what's not here, what didn't work, what needs fixing, what should I do next? Satisfaction. So I want to invite everybody, take a couple of seconds and center yourselves, recenter yourselves. Just, you know, bring that awareness in. And think about moments when you've experienced satisfaction. Maybe small moments. Maybe you cooked just an amazing meal and just, mwah, you know, that, that gesture so good. Maybe you gave someone a present and it was absolutely the right choice and they were so happy and you felt satisfied or you received something. Maybe you worked really hard to change, I don't know, a process or a policy on your job or in your community and you did it you and your team satisfaction just notice what in your body are the correlates are the markers of satisfaction You want to get so good at identifying these and recognizing even the least little glimmer of satisfaction so that you can orient towards that. You can let that influence and define your actions and motions as opposed to what most of us are so well trained in, focusing on what's not working and using, letting that galvanize us. And we're not that we're going to get rid of that. Great skills and competencies there. And we want to build these others.
And just if I could see, what's the easiest way of doing this? I guess a show of hands, like the, are there reactions in that participant thing for, uh, yes, got it, thumbs up? Yep, thumbs up. Just let me know that everybody in here has some cues that will tell them when they're satisfied. Good, 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 good. Now, just because we got a minute, I'm going to ask you this. How many people, show of hands, have a sound that goes with satisfaction? I'm going to be honest, y'all. Mm, 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 mm. Yum, 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 yum. Check for yourself. Are there sounds for you? And everybody, let's come off mute and let's hear them. Let's hear the cacophony of satisfied oh, sound. Yay. Oh, Y'all still going? That is great. You know that many of us are in places where we get really good at being professional and kind of zipped up and not letting our bodies speak in a more organic way. So, still with all judgment, because <laughs> you know where I know where I can go, mm -mm, and where I just need to keep that private. <laughs> but I also know, yes, that's my sound. Y'all can probably tell I'm very auditory, I'm very oriented towards the auditory. But you know what? All our channels are working. So I invite you to practice noticing tiny glimmers of satisfaction, telling yourself, I am satisfied. This satisfies me. I feel satisfied. And marking it, if it works for you, with a sound. Just another way of letting your body know, yep, I registered that you register that I'm satisfied. And what all of this has to do with our clapper is you want to check as you move through your day, are you satisfied with what you're doing as far as moving towards embodying that thing? that thing you long for. Uh, my phrase these days is the delights of wisdom. So there will be times, oh, I'm on a Zoom call. Let me just check in with my body. Am I on path towards the delights of wisdom? Okay, check, satisfied. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, I'm not on path. Okay, register. How do I want to choose differently? So all of this is another way to work your commitment, to work that declaration for the sake of your well-being, your wholeness, your health, your presence, your connection to others. We're in the conditions we're in. The world does not look the way that it did nine months ago, a year ago, and it won't again for a while. And some of that will be really wonderful with ways things will change. But the road between now and then may include a great deal of isolation and loss and tragedy and outrage. So how we keep building our aliveness for ourselves and those we care about and the larger whole, all beings, all life. One simple practice is really honing into and working your commitment, as they say in some traditions, the way a drowning person grasps for air. All right.
Delonis, may I take one last? Well, you know what? No. Uh, I'm complete with what I had for you today. Uh, if you have comments, questions, you can drop them in the chat box. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Solanus, okay? Thank you for this practice time together. Also, that was uh, really, really beautiful. I know I personally needed um, that this morning. And uh, the statement you made about um, working your commitment as though you're a drowning person fighting for air, like really just landed truly deeply for me. Um, that can be really challenging. And it's also um, a really uh, great space for me <laughs> to open up uh, some of the things that we can use in order to um, help us along the way for our commitment. So uh, we have some courses that are open for enrollment. Uh, one is Embodied Leadership Two, which is how to deepen into your commitment and looking at uh, some of your condition tendencies. That course is open to any student who's taken um, any of our courses, so EL1 or EL Core, it's a way to return to practice. And I hold as a person who is a dancer that it's always good to go back to the fundamentals, especially and just like get some nourishment, find some ground. Uh, the second course that we have open is for coaches. And so it could be a, a coach of a, dis a different discipline as long as you have 100 hours of coaching underneath your belt or you are a graduate of POET, um, which is the partnership uh, that we have, a partnership that we have, um, or a student or graduate of SISC. And that is coaching and context. It is uh, practical solutions for embodying dignity, inclusion, and belonging for diversity in your coaching practice. Um, both courses are on our website and you can go to, I'm going to put the link into the chat for where our online programs are. And that um, shows the institute.com slash online dash offerings. Um, I don't have a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot more to share unless people have questions. So uh, Alta, if you're game, we have a couple of minutes here if you I can I can take questions, okay. good questions about courses, whatever. We've got uh, eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So if you have a question, please either drop it in the chat or raise your digital hand. And uh, we already have one. So Kristen, would you like to come off mute? Kirsten. Kirsten, sorry, my apologies. So, do you know when you're going to be offering Embodied Leadership One? We are looking at those dates. There will be an Embodied Leadership Core, which is equivalent to uh, Embodied Leadership One this fall. Um, it will be an online offering. We're still uh, finalizing that. So, it will be somewhere around October, November is when we're predicting that course will be available. Okay, and the other question I had, I noticed, um, so I asked this in the chat box and somebody else as well about being new to this and yeah, how do you start to formulate a commitment or declaration? And there were uh, two books mentioned, The Politics of Trauma by Stacy and The Art of Coaching by Razi, um, is that what you recommend? I mean, I actually just came up with a commitment, but I don't know if it, uh, I don't know if it's right. So I could ask Alta, I don't know. Um, Kirsten, so first, those are both great books. Um, so you definitely check them out, especially I think Art of Coaching is great you know if you're kind of entering um and thinking about coaching um and the best way to sharpen a commitment and also even to begin really studying and learning the methodology is to work with a coach um so that's that that's those are some suggestions but i'd love to hear your commitment and i do also want to respond if you can save a couple of seconds to a couple of uh questions that i saw in the chat but what's your commitment love 
So I just set, wrote this down right now. My purpose is to treat unresolved trauma for the ultimate flourishing of God's kingdom. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. All right. So it's a much longer conversation. If that purpose resonates for you, work with it. Because here's the thing about commitments and declarations, the way we talk about them in this methodology, it comes out of the work on speech acts that was done by Fernando Flores. So there's a whole system around how we create our lives, our reality, our experience through language. And a declaration is the articulation of a, of a desired future. It is something that we are declaring will be. And there's a reason that we say it a certain way. You may have heard people um, when they were speaking, like Leah Patrick, um, say, I am a commitment to. We don't say I have a commitment because saying I have a commitment, it's like, well, I have a pen. I can drop it. I can put it down. I can leave it behind. But what I am is de defining who I be, who I am in this world. But that, you know, you don't need to get into all of that where you're sitting. I think what you're doing um, is defining what you really care about and what your life to be about. Here's the test. Again, you pay any attention to Harry Potter ever? No? no. Okay. Forget it. It's a meaningless reference and I won't use it. Um, but the idea is, and I can't think of an, another analogy at the moment and I'm rushing, but, but there is a feeling of there's a jolt, there's an energy that goes through your body. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's delight. Again, I always say queasy. Most of us, if we really, really, really tell the truth about what matters to us, about what we want and long for, there's fear. Because there's the fear of, I might not get this. I might not be able to do this. There's also the fear of, I might get it. And then what, what will I do? So there's, you know, those kinds of feelings. That's the main thing. When you're practicing articulating your purpose, do you feel galvanized, revved up, psyched up, ready to go, even though you're scared? Okay? Yeah, got it. Um, someone asked specifically about my use of, uh, I am a commitment to the harvest and feast, which is in Stacy's book. Um, I actually, that commitment has evolved. Um, it was a really important commitment for me for a while. It had to do with stepping out of um, professional lifetime student mode. Folks may notice I really love to learn. That's the, the upside. I love to learn. <laughs> I'm a learning machine, I've been told. On the other hand, Staying in an identity as a perpetual student also meant I did not claim my mastery. And those places where actually there's something to harvest and enjoy. So harvest and feast for me, a lot of it has to do with really fully, it's, it's a teaching commitment in part and fully stepping into my teaching. The image of feast very much for me influenced, I am a black Southern human being and it's very much influenced by the image of the welcome table out of that tradition, the we are all together and there's enough for everybody. Okay, and um, the other thing was, what was the connection between satisfaction and the one word? Pract just to repeat, practicing, really noticing, feeling your own satisfaction, the things that tell you you're satisfied, that you've hit the mark, this is right, you're in the right way. You want to bring the question about your commitment, your one word, your core purpose into every single action. You are in the middle of a huge fight with your partner, right? Ask yourself, huh, am I on purpose? towards, am I moving in this fight as I'm here? You know, I mean, fight with your child, fight with your, your boss, your employee. Y'all know, we all get into these things. Right then, check in your body. Is the way I'm showing up moving me towards my purpose, my commitment? Am I satisfied or not? That's, that's the reason for having a really clear 
really clear satisfaction markers that are somatic. Is that helpful? I hope that answered the question. Anyway, we're at noon, um, <laughs> sorry, noon Eastern time in New York. I know everybody here is at a different time, but uh, we should probably honor your time and complete for now. So thanks. Thank you so much, Alta. This has been really wonderful and for spending a little bit more time answering some questions. Um, we're in deep gratitude. I as Have well. a wonderful day, everyone. Yep. Take care. <laughs>